Yippee Heaven Caravan! That means going outside a lot, doesn't it? This has been my idea. I really wanted to live outside mainly, but you know, I am not into roughing it, and I love a homey kind of beauty. So the term glamping really fits for what I'm creating for myself in this lifestyle, glamorous camping. <laughs> so, all right, so this is the beginning of the Hippie Heaven Caravan story, okay? I, um, I do, uh, I, I, <laughs> It, it all started a little while back when my mom's house burned down and we had to try to find her a mobile home and sure enough uh, she gets hooked on these tiny house videos and uh, we end up getting her a big huge mobile home it's, it's like it's not like a tiny caravan or tiny house at all but in the meantime she got me hooked and I started thinking why are is everybody spending thirty thousand dollars on a tiny house when they could just get a trailer. It's all classism because it's like trailer trash, right? So I go, I want to do trailer treasure. <laughs> I want to find me a trailer that somebody's given away instead of 30,000, how about free? So sure enough, that week I, I keep looking and looking and I find a trailer that's got some damage um, that needs to be fixed and the guy wants 350 bucks. <laughs> I went and I got that thing and everybody said I was crazy. They said I could never fix the damage, but I did. I did with a carpenter. I'm, I'm, no, I'm no carpenter. <laughs> I, I know when to ask for help. So now I've got the, 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 this trailer. I call it Dream Boat. And you know, it may not last very long. It's an old dream boat. <laughs> it may not. I might have to like take a hammer to it and set it on fire at a certain point. But listen, it's gonna last me for a little while. <laughs> it's got lights, it's got heat, it's got a fridge and a microwave and it's beautiful, cozy little nest. Compared to camping, it's glamping for me, right? <laughs> so then I was just like, okay, so when I found this, this uh, trailer, it's like well, where to put it. And my mom volunteered, she said, put it in my driveway, honey, until you figure it out. Because my goal, sweetheart, I don't know about you, but I want freedom. I want freedom now. I don't want to wait to be a millionaire. I don't want to wait my whole life until I've already slaved away at some crazy job thing that I hate in the masculine world so that I can be feminine. I've only got, what, 10, 20 years left? I don't know how many years. And I want to live it now. So it occurred to me, everybody who owns land doesn't pay rent, except for the most people that own land. They pay a mortgage, it's even worse. And they're paying interest on it the whole time. And it's like, it's never really freedom. So I thought, I put this intention into my heart, my soul. I said, Lord God is, you know, nature, all it is. I want to own land outright. And I want to own this land within a month. <laughs> now, I put it in this cute little app. It was like a manifestation app on my phone. I literally did that. Yeah, combining technology with nature living. Now, this is the other thing. Here I am with my phone in nature, right? Connecting me to you and the world. And I'm about to do a whole really cool digital expertise, you know, life path too. But that's not the, the reason I'm doing that digital thing is so that I can be here in nature doing my art with love and joy and family and feminine flow most of the day. So guess what happens? It's, it's already happened, darling. It's only, um, let's see, what are we in? March, April, May. I think we're at May 7th today, May 8th. I own the land. <laughs> it was just a month and a half ago I had made that prayer, darling. I own the land. Now you're gonna be like, well, what really happened? <laughs> okay, okay, what really happened was I do solar energy and I, I sell solar panels and solar is really a very difficult way to go because you hardly ever get paid. <laughs> you're only paid when the panels go up on people's roofs and you can work for two, three months and then people change their mind or, or the thing, this whole solar system costs the company so much money even after your work there's nothing left for commission that's just solar so I had been told that my commissions were gone and there was nothing going to be coming to me after months of working on solar 
but I did that prayer and in the middle of and as soon as I made the prayer I went out looking for lamb as if I had the money this is the thing to do okay because we're talking magical hippie heaven caravan okay that means you activate magic and what makes it all special and wonderful is the magic like today it's snowing in the middle of spring oh and my dog is here oh okay yeah <laughs> yeah so <laughs> what activate magic right so i activated as if i had the money i went looking and i found land immediately online because my prayer was like i want somewhere where i can live in a trailer uh, and where it's legal i want somewhere where i can live in yurts and it's legal i want it somewhere where they can i can have a lot of wild parties connected to community and it's safe and legal without bothering neighbors where i can have you know um uh, where I can be in my feminine flow and not so out in nature that I'm all isolated. I want to be, you know, within close enough range to a magical village and my mother and daughter that I can get to them. So in within that circle of circumference, I started looking for land and found this campground that was selling land uh, where you can actually live um, as long as you do certain things. Okay, so you're going to learn from me about how I pull this off because yes there are restraints <laughs> and one of he's just having a blast he's <laughs> okay you know and, and one of the, them is of course sewage that's the main thing why they won't oops sorry let you move onto these lands is, uh, in the middle of nowhere or sacred places where there's just not many houses or this place is on a lake Woohoo! <laughs> but I figured it out because I got myself an incinerating toilet of all the things. By the time I, I bought the incinerating toilet with a little yurt for it to go inside, it was almost as much as I spent on the land. <laughs> but how did it happen that I got that land? Well, my daughter and her fiance were, got excited when they went up and saw this land that I found. So they wanted to chip in, but mainly it had to be me. <laughs> so what I did, is I um, prayed, visualized, and then I don't know where my mentor called me up. He said, Eve, you know, I just, I think I might have caught a mistake on your account, your solar account. I know that you, you say you, you shouldn't be paid on this, but I'm going to investigate for you. He investigates and he discovers that I made a big mistake that I never would have caught, that I didn't even know I had done. He figures it out and he says, Eve, now that I fixed this and brought it to attention to everybody, you're going to get paid $9,000 on all the work that you have <laughs> not um, been paid on forever. <laughs> you know, that that's the kind of thing when, when you, you activate your, your magic and your joy, a different destiny appears than the one that you, you would have um, you, you would have created. Okay. So, here it is, we've got the land. I've got the dreamboat trailer, fragile as it is. <laughs> I've got the incinerating toilet coming in the, in the mail and a used yurt that's actually brand new called the Blue Lotus Mongolian Yurt. It's 16 feet. And that's what the porta potty, the, I mean the incinerating toilet's gonna go in. So what's an incinerating toilet? Well, it's not eco-friendly. I'm sorry, I really want to do composting toilet, but it's not legal at this place. I can't go doing my compost, which would be the best thing for the earth. But for now, this is what I'm going to do. The incinerating toilet uses propane, and it actually turns your poo to ash and your pee to steam. And if you get a um, catalytic converter, it cleans the air and there's no smell. And um, you can actually, I can use it for some of the, if I do dishes in a very light way, I can actually use it for my gray water of my dishes. And for bathing, well, there's a lot of rivers and streams around here. <laughs> and there's a lake up there. And I got friends and family to go to visit as well. So it's bringing me more into community. And I'm a little scared. I'm a little scared. But at this moment, what I really, really need is community. I don't want to be there all alone. And that's what I'm really moved by, is community is coming out of the woodwork who wants to join me up there. 
So the first challenge I have is that I've manifested actually three trailers. <laughs> one trailer came with the land for free. <laughs> and then I've got Dreamboat, the one I'm in. And then a third one that a girlfriend's got, she could bring up there. And then I need a fourth one for a <laughs> another girlfriend. So basically, the big challenge right now is how to fit them all in a beautiful way to create a little village, a little caravan village uh, that has yurts. So that each trailer, is my idea, is each trailer will have its own yurt to have its, its expanded space where you can do yoga and you can do your art. Whoop. Ooh, there he is. <laughs> okay, your dog can run free. <laughs> oh. And uh, and then, so what I'm envisioning is this big, huge yurt that's our community space. So the big yurt, the idea is that's where we have a kitchen that's communal. That's where we have party space to dance and hang out and play music and have living room. But we got to keep it really sparse, really beautiful and really open, so it's just not about that whole thing about, oh, it's my stuff that makes me so mature. No, this is like spiritual lightness. Caravan living means you can move your body, you can take down a yurt in a day, you can move your little tiny house trailer, it's on wheels, you can, uh, but mainly you can move your body. In caravan living, it's sexy and it's feminine, and so it's not all blocked in with possessions and furniture everywhere and um, you know, prestige items that take away the actual experience of being an artist. So it also, in the caravan life, our studios, our, our smaller years next to our trailers are where we can do art, is part of the idea, where you can actually keep that paint out all the time. It can be messy. You don't have to worry about taking over communal space that people need for cooking and dancing and um, you know, so we're going to make a beautiful communal kitchen and the idea is we're going to cook for each other so that each of us takes a night to cook or we cook together every day, once a day and uh, do a potluck for the neighborhood camp facility and friends and we do a dinner club where we rove from house to house in the neighborhood once a week it's a new family who's in the club who gives the, the dinner club so this is gonna be fun for you to see if I pull this off right <laughs> that's the big vision you're seeing all I have right now I got the land Woo! with my daughter and her fiance and two girlfriends coming to join me and I'm thinking like well what do we do about the fact that one of these women is my age and she really should be a co-owner Am I, am I going to do reparations eventually and give her part of my portion? Or am I going to buy the land next door so that she can really feel rooted? Reparations means, you know, like, I got this money because I got into solar. And solar was a really a male-dominated field when I was getting in there. And I couldn't get hardly any help from anybody except for this Latin guy who went to bat for me. Ray Rosa. <laughs> And because of him, I was able to become a consultant in solar and then do my own company eventually because of him. But I know for some of my girlfriends, my Latin girlfriends, my African-American girlfriends, they wouldn't have been able to do what I did because it was hard enough as a woman for me, as a white girl woman. I had to fight like crazy to get that help. And it was only because of his help that I actually got through that glass ceiling. So that's part of what else I'm doing is this land is it's like Mohawk territory. So I'm really considering how am I going to do my reparations to uh, those who came before me, the African Americans here who made this possible for me to be here, and the Native Americans whose land was stolen, um, whose land I'm, I am occupying. Uh, it's, it's a good question, isn't it? So part of the vision besides figuring a heart-centered way of reparations is not from the head like I love this woman I want to be around her it would be my greatest privilege if I could buy her company by giving her land right <laughs> Christiana I love you anyway we'll see what happens with that but there's the fact that it's gonna be really cold up there in the winter oh my gosh what am I gonna do so the other part of the story is the caravan 
experience where we leave our little heaven that we create, our, our home, where we have roots, and we do an expanded journey with wings in the winter, and we migrate together as a little village. And maybe we go to Hawaii or somewhere in Mexico, and instead of going there needy and hungry for community, trying to take you know, that cultural experience, we come bringing a community life that we have created, and we recreate it in, in other places and offer the music, the art, the dance, the theater performances, and the, the meals that we uh, are usually doing up here in the forest. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so I got big challenges this week. I, I gotta figure out gravel to go underneath the trailers. Do I do that or not? I, I gotta get people to volunteer to help me, huh? I, I've gotta get my own dreamboat dragged up a mountain top and, and it's stuck, like the, the pop out is stuck and the ceiling is I have to take the ceiling down to get the pop out in. I don't know how to do a drill bit <laughs> or scary those drill things. And, <laughs> and I've got to get this gear platform built for the potty. And then I've got to figure out how to hook up propane for the incinerating toilet. But the propane won't work without electricity like a solar battery or a solar panel or actual electricity up there. <laughs> So if I move up there at first, I may just be without electricity completely to begin with. And um, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared. Okay. But that's the truth. I've taken myself on. I've taken on my dream. I've been drawing this dream in the sand of Puerto Rico. When I first had this dream, I went and I lived on a beach in Puerto Rico for a year. I did it. I camped for a, for a year with my sweetheart at the time and he saw me drawing circles in the sand, the same circles I'm drawing all over my notebooks now of these yurts, of the big theater kitchen yurts and of the, um, the small studio yurts and of the guest house yurts and of the, um, the healing hut yurt <laughs> and, and, and the little porta potty yurt, round spaces love. I am craving feminine space feminine life, roundness. I'm sick of boxes. I'm doing this because I've got to get out of the masculine matrix. I have to. The whole thing of money being at the center of everything and money being the purpose for everything, it can't be my purpose anymore. <laughs> so here I am because I'm doing this and I get stir crazy in a little trailer. It puts me out into nature, right? And it's snowing today on this spring day. <laughs> We've got green leaves with snow. <laughs> and I'm out in it. And, and, and that's part of the thing is my addiction to my phone. Like, like I'm loving doing this video because it makes me feel connected to the world <laughs> and to you. <laughs> but I have to get unaddicted enough that I can go back into my art and my writing and reading and, and dancing and finding fulfillment that's all my own, not given to anybody else for them to have. It's all my own, like the value of experience, right? The feminine flow. <laughs> and I am longing, honey, to be able to dress in a wedding dress, flouncy lace every day out in nature. Won't that be fun? It's just that the weather's a little chilly. <laughs> and that's the other thing. This place we're going in the winter with our caravan, it's gonna have a beach and some warmth. You know, for my wedding dress, fluttery lace to flow in the wind.